this is a slow moving train right here. You're not gonna come in here very easy and cut across this whole end grain with some kind of a spoon knife. And I haven't really tried it yet, but I'm just guessing that. So right now I'm removing as much as I can with my chisel because it'll be much easier to cut across the end grain, I think, with this chisel than anything else. Until I get in there deep enough that I can't use a chisel, then I'm gonna have to figure something else out. Okay, so I'm just kind of going in here now with this spoon tool and cutting around the inside of the bowl here a little bit to clean some of this out and see where I'm really at. And this spoon tool here that I made, I really, really like it. It works really good too. And most of the spoon tools I've made so far work really good for different tasks. It just depends on what you're doing with it, but they all work pretty good. The problem is going to be when I get down inside here a bit deeper how to get the very bottom of this cleaned out, and I'll figure that out. But I'm not going to be able to do it with a chisel. I don't know if I'm going to have to create a special tool for getting down in there. That's what I have to do. That's what I have to do. But I'd like to think I've already got something that would work for that. This tool is one of North Bay's tools, North Bay Forge. One of their spoon tools is double beveled, but it's pretty small. So I can kind of get in there and cut that lower bowl area. And if this works really well, I may try to duplicate this as well. Having different tools to get the job done is really what it's all about. And having the right tool when you need it is important as well. This tool looks like it's doing pretty good. Getting down in there. I ended up going to a small manufactured gooseneck 5A by 8 sweep bowl gouge by file that I had my toolbox here and I really hadn't found a lot of use for this thing until now. I actually had purchased it by accident thinking it had a bigger sweep but it's actually getting down right into that bowl at the bottom and cleaning out those tool marks that I was trying to get cleaned out before that I didn't have a small enough tool to get in there to. So this thing has definitely got a use when it comes to that. Now I'm going to go in here with my scorp, just clean all this up.
Well, I got this ladle that I'm working on. And I really just kind of thought I'd come out here and work on it in the woods. Just kind of sit, see if I see any squirrels. I got my shotgun with me in a couple rounds. If I see one, I'll pop him. Otherwise, I'm just going to sit here and enjoy myself. Whittle my ladle. If you're wondering about the blood, it's not from the knife. That's from the thorns out here in the eastern woodlands. They are still ferocious, even in November. So I got chopped up a little bit just walking in here. There is a huge risk with a ladle made like this because you have bored into the center of a piece of wood. And as it dries and shrinks, it's going to tend to crack around the outside of this bowl. Now I have dropped this down at an angle a little bit like we talked about in that one video to stave some of that off. But keeping it outside and keeping it damp and wet and in the moisture will help preserve it as well. Keeping it in a water bucket, things like that. Um, since it's made to be a water bucket ladle, keeping it in a water bucket is going to keep moisture in it and keep it from cracking as well. But if you take this thing inside, it's probably going to crack. <laughs>